Hey, how's it going guys? So today I'm going to do a video on choosing your first pet snake, okay? So I'm going to go through some talking points and hopefully this will help you decide what snake that you would like to get and, you know, maybe a few tips on how to take care of it, okay? So here I have one of my hides and inside here is my king snake. He's just relaxing in there, okay? Now your first decision when buying a snake is going to be what type of snake you want. There's corn snakes, king snakes, ball pythons, boa constrictors, you know there's tons out there. Um, some of the good starter snakes are going to be your corn snakes, your king snakes like this guy, and ball pythons. So you want to research your own on which of those seems better for you. One main factor to decide is the size of the snake, okay? Now, let me show you in comparison. Let's see if I can get him out of here. Okay? This guy right here is three years old. And he's going to get a little active here. And as you can see, he's not very big yet. He's about, uh... I can't really judge the size there, but he's about three feet long. Not very thick around. He still eats, you know, baby mice. So, you know, these these types of snakes are going to grow up to about five or six feet long. And they probably eat adult mice when they get to their full size, okay? Now, in comparison, this is a three-year-old ball python. As you can see, the difference in size there, right? Much different, okay? He's a little active right now, which is no big deal. So you're going to have to decide what size of snake you would want. You want a large snake or a small snake, okay? Now there is a large misconception that snakes will not grow any larger than the tank that you put them in. And that is wrong. A snake will grow as big as the snake's gonna grow. Okay? So if you bought uh, an anaconda and you put it in a shoebox, it is not gonna stay that small, okay? It's gonna outgrow that shoebox and it's gonna be eating baby pigs before you know it. So you need to decide if you can handle a snake that large. Let me give you an example here. I have the Reptiles Magazine, which has lots of good facts and stuff that you might wanna check out. Check out this here, okay? This is a reticulated python. Do you think you could handle a snake that big? Would you be able to house that and feed it? Okay? When you start off, that snake's gonna be about the size of my king snake I just showed you. Yeah, they look small and cute and you think you can handle it, but when it, when it gets large enough to eat you, you might wanna rethink about what size snake you wanted, okay? Um, the other thing with that is price. You want a king snake, which this one is uh, rare in my area. You can't really find these, so I paid about $100 for this king snake. My ball python that I just showed you is a pastel ball python. I paid $250 for her, okay? Because she's just uh, a unique ball python. She's not a normal. If you go to a pet shop, you could pay a lot more for a snake like this than if you went to like a reptile show where breeders were selling their snakes. Okay? So you want to factor that in. Sorry, he's really active. I'm trying to get him to stay in frame here. Okay? So, if you went to a normal pet shop, you may pay... 200 or 300 dollars for the snake instead of 100. You may pay a lot more for a ball python than you would at a reptile show. Like I bought my normal ball python for 15 dollars at a reptile show. If you go to PetSmart, you may pay 80 dollars for that same snake. So that's the factor that you need to figure out. Okay, another factor with your snake is going to be food. As you can see, he's a lot smaller. He's going to eat small mice until he gets larger. He might eat large mice. Mice, considering where you get them, could be, you know, a couple bucks up to three or four dollars. 
as for my ball python, she's going to eat medium rats right now. Okay? A medium rat is about $5.99. Okay? So you need to decide if you can afford to feed your animal. Now, if you breed your own rats, you know, that's no problem. You could do that yourself. Or if you have a local pet shop that sells rats, you know, you could pay that $5.99 for a rat. Or if you go to a reptile show, you could probably buy rats for a lot cheaper. You could also go with frozen thawed rats. And what that means is that the rat would be pre-killed and then they freeze it to keep it fresh. And then you would thaw that out with warm water and then feed it to your snake. Okay, some snakes have feeding issues. By ball pythons, uh, they seem to be tricky. She smells my other snake in there. Um, sometimes they seem like tricky feeders. They don't want to eat. They're just picky that way. So sometimes you just have to work with them. Some will eat uh, frozen thawed mice. Some will not. Some will only eat live. So you have to be prepared for that. You don't want to go out into a field and catch, you know, field mice and try to feed them to your snake because, for one, that can uh, introduce parasites and diseases and stuff that you don't want your snake to have. And two, that's just really, really hard to do. I don't know about you, but I haven't been mouse hunting. So you want to you want to know where your food sources for your snakes are going to be, and you want to make sure that you'll be able to feed them, okay? Now, some snakes are picky eaters, like I was saying. Ball pythons... With her, she hasn't ate in two months, okay? That's not a big issue, okay? Ball pythons and even king snakes sometimes go off feed for months at a time. Sometimes they just they just don't want to eat. Sometimes in wintertime, usually with the ball pythons, when it's cool outside, they will not eat. So, you know, don't get too worried if your snake is not eating for a while. That's no big deal. Now, if they start getting really, really thin and you can see their spine sticking out, you know, something's probably wrong with them, you need to take them to a vet and get them checked out because something's wrong and they're not eating for a reason. But if they don't eat for a few meals, it's no big deal, okay? Put your, uh, put your rat or your mouse or whatever you're feeding in the tank with your snake. Um, leave it in there for about 10 minutes. Don't leave it unattended because sometimes with snakes, like a ball python here, sometimes she'll get afraid of the mouse and she'll cover herself up and try to hide from the rat and the rat will actually chew on your snake and can hurt your snake so you gotta keep an eye on that if she doesn't feed on the rat take the rat out wait a few days and try again okay if she doesn't eat then then she's obviously not interested in eating and you can just give her another week and try again it's no big deal they're all active now so okay so that's a consideration that you want. Um, let's see. Um, housing. Let's talk about housing. When I first started with mine, I kept them in a simple little tub. Okay? Just something like the Sterilite tub. And I drilled holes into the side and I had their bedding and all that in there. And this worked fine. As they grew larger, I moved to this tub okay and I don't have all the stuff in there now but you know you much larger size and the reason I keep them in tubs is because I have a rack system which looks like a giant bookshelf that you keep separate tubs in okay you can also buy terrariums and gallon tanks let me show you another example here okay here's another examples this is just like a glass terrarium. You could put in uh, different types of uh, decoration and stuff in there. You just don't want anything toxic, anything that would be toxic to your snake, which I'll cover that later. Here's similar sort of a rack system where you could have multiple snakes. Okay, and there's an uh, aquarium, which you could just put a mesh top over. Make sure that you have locks on your tanks, okay, because... Uh, king snakes and ball pythons are escape artists, okay? They will escape. I actually lost my first king snake because they did get out. They know how they will find a weakness and they will get out and they're gone, okay? Um, another thing for that would be bedding. As you can see in 
my tank here. I just have paper towel. You can use paper towel. You could use newspaper. Um, you could use aspen bedding. Aspen bedding is usually preferred. If you go into a pet shop, you're going to find bags of bedding. Aspen will be probably what you want. But if you don't want to mess with that, you can just use paper towels. That's what I use. It's super easy to change out. You'll know immediately if they've used the restroom because, you know, you'll have the stain. You can just clean out their tank and you're ready to go. Um, you can do that once a week. Clean out their tank, wash off their stuff, change out their water bowl. They're ready to go. Also, uh, I missed the point of with feeding, you only have to feed them once a week. So, you know, if um, they're really simple to mess with, I mean, you don't have to worry about feeding them every single day. You don't have to worry about a food bowl or anything. Oh, sorry, she's uh, crawling up my arm here. Hello. Okay, so it's super easy to take care of them. Um, you can also use AstroTurf. That works in there. That makes them feel a little bit more natural. Um, it's a little bit harder to clean. You could also use Cypress Chips, which holds good moisture. You want to have good moisture for your snakes also. The problem with um, wooden chips and stuff is you can get mite infestations, which are really hard to kill off if there's wood bedding. Okay. If you had mites in a... Uh, with this, you would see little black flecks all over the paper towel and then you would have to take steps to kill those off and I could always do another video on that for you guys um, water bowls I have an example of what I use for my ball python here for my big girl she has large water bowl like this that she can actually bathe in there if she wants but they usually don't do that unless there's something wrong with them or if they're shedding and they're having a tough time shedding they might soak in their water or if they have mites they're trying to drown the mites so if, you're, if your snake continually hides in its water bowl, you might want to check it out, okay? But this is just an example of her water bowl, and this is an example of his water bowl. It's just a little plastic bowl that I keep water in. You want to keep something large enough that they're not going to tip over with their body weight, but not too, uh, too large that, you know, they're going to drown it or anything, but I, I don't think that would happen. But So with this, is a good size for him. He doesn't tip it over it's stable how it is and that gives him plenty of water to drink and I can switch that out uh, once a week and clean out the bowl this also helps keep humidity in the tank for shedding reasons when they shed um, the more moisture they have the easier their old skin will come off and with their hides they'll have something to rub against to help pull that old shed off of them now the shedding is not uh, you know like they just shed at different times. It just depends on how they're growing, how much they've been feeding. They'll grow different and they'll shed. I could do another video on that for you guys also. Okay, so you have your bedding. You have your water bowl. Now, when you go to a pet shop, they're going to try to sell you a tank and a heat rock and a water bowl and say that's all you need, okay? That is not all you need because snakes need somewhere to hide. In nature, they hide under rocks. They hide under limbs. They hide because they're afraid of predators, you know, they don't want to get ate by birds and owls and, you know, anything else that comes along that wants to eat them. So, you want to have a hide, like I have, you see him hiding in there now. He feels safe and secure and comfortable in there. And you can buy many different types of hides. This was a more natural rock looking one. I also have this one in here that he can hide in. And they sell just regular plastic hides like this, which these were... I use for my ball pythons when they were babies. They actually fit in this. Uh, they no longer fit in there. So you want to hide for them. You're going to usually keep two hides. You want one on your warm end of your tank, which we'll talk about in a minute, and one on your cool end of the tank, okay? That way, if they're too cool, they can go to the warm end and hide, or if they're too hot, they can go to the cool end and hide, and they'll be comfortable wherever they are, okay? Um, for heating, there's many ways to heat your tank. Like I said, mine is in a rack, so they these tubs slide into the shelves, and I have heating all the way down the back of the shelf that heats the, the, the far end of the tank, and then it grades down to a cooler end of the tank, so the, the snake can thermoregulate its own body however it feels like it needs to. Um, if you're using a, another sort of tank, you could use this, which is 
heat tape, okay? This, you'd lay down flat on a flat surface, and then you would just lay your tank right on top of there. And then this, as you plug it in, will heat up and create heat underneath the tank, which is also good for snakes when they're eating, when they need to digest their food, they will go to a warm spot and lay, and that will warm them up and help them digest. So you can see here, you just clip the two ends on there, you plug it in and it heats up. Now, this is very important with this type of heating, is to have a thermostat, okay? But you plug it into here, you'll set the temperature that you want, and it won't heat up farther than what you set it to. When it gets too hot, this will automatically shut it off until it cools down a couple degrees, and then it'll turn it back on. Okay. Now, why that's important is because when you have this tape plugged in, it'll just continuously heat up until it is so hot that, sorry, my cat's trying to get the snake, that it could burn your snake. Okay. This is why I would advise against heat rocks. When I first got my my very first snake, they gave me this heat rock and you plug it in and this just heats up until it's really warm okay and your snake will want to lay on that or actually underneath it because it wants to hide and the snakes don't feel burning like we do like when we feel something hot it'll burn our skin and our brains will understand that that's burning us and we'll stop touching it snakes don't sense it that way they just they just feel the warmth so they will continuously lay on this rock until it burns through their scales and burns their flesh underneath and by then, you know, that's bad news. They're really, really hurt. So I would definitely advise against heat rocks. They also sell heat pads, which I don't have one out here right now. But it's just a rectangular pad, and it plugs in just like the heat tape does. And usually it has an adhesive side on one side, and you can stick that straight underneath your tub. And then you want to plug that into another. Here I have another version of a different thermostat. You always want to keep them plugged into this so that your snake doesn't get burnt, okay? Now, another good piece to have with that would be a, thermo a thermometer, which this one here, as you can see, I have this piece right here, the white piece is a little adhesive. You'll stick that into the warm side of your tank, and that was going to tell you the heat that is on the inside of your tank, this will be outside of your tank, so it'll tell you the heat outside of your tank, and then it's going to tell you the humidity. So you want to have a decent amount of humidity for your snake also. Okay? There's lots of resources online that you can look up all this information. Don't get overwhelmed. Okay? This is just really important to help keep your snake healthy and comfortable. Okay? Uh, let's see what else we have here. Okay, with health, um, as I mentioned earlier, with mites, your snakes can get mites and ticks and fleas, okay? So, usually not fleas, but mites and even ticks, okay? So, you need to make sure that you keep their bedding clean. You need to make sure that when you get another snake that you, you don't introduce them together. Keep them in separate rooms for over a week. That way, if one snake would happen to have mites, it wouldn't transfer those on to another snake. Okay. Um, besides that, snakes are pretty healthy. You don't want too hum too much humidity in your tank because uh, that could cause respiratory problems in your snake. And they st if they start blowing bubbles out of their nostril or anything, that means that they have too much moisture in their lungs, and that's really not good. You need to take them to a vet and have them checked out. So make sure that you don't get too much humidity in their tank. And that about covers it, guys. I mean, um, let's see if I forgot anything. Uh, when you first buy your snake, you're going to want to take it out. You're going to want to hold it. You're going to want to check it out and, and play with it and maybe feed it right off the bat. I advise against that, okay, because that's going to stress your snake out. Your snake's going from one environment to a new environment. It's going to become stressed. It's not going to want to eat. You know, that makes it really uncomfortable. So... When you buy your new snake, put it in its new tank with everything the way it is, and just leave it alone for a week, okay? Don't try to feed it. Don't handle it. Don't pull it out of its tank. Just give it that time to adjust to its new surroundings, okay? 
and then after that week you can try to feed and usually it'll go well so um, that's about all I have um, if you guys have any questions uh, leave me a comment I'll try to answer anything I can I may have left some stuff out I'm just kind of rambling from what I know um, and that's about it so hopefully this will help you guys choose a snake that you want um, I have several other ball pythons. Maybe I'll do another video for you showing my different ball pythons. Um, she's getting a little active. I want to put her hide and her water bowl and everything back in here for her. And then that'll be all. If you guys want to see some of my other snakes, uh, just leave me a comment. Let me know. I'll do some more videos for you guys. Anything you want to see, any questions you have, maybe I can do more videos on that. Um, if there's anything I may be left out, if you guys, any of you snake guys out there know that I left it out, PM me and uh, I'll annotate anything else maybe. Alright, so thanks for watching guys.